Okay, everybody, here's a, a quick review on how to use the, the motor tables. Remember, we're looking obviously in Article 430 because it's motor related, and so we're looking at Article 430 250, and we're looking at 430 248 for single phase, 250 is for three phase motors. So, a little background information on Table 430 248 it's the table. You, you use when you need to determine the correct value for a single phase AC motor covers voltages from 115 to 230 horsepower values from 1 sixth through 10 horse so 10 horse is the largest single phase motor you can find and these are motors you would commonly find powering air compressors, table saws and other woodworking equipment and power tools and typically you're going to find those in, in kind of a residential type setting. Um, a friend of mine has a, has a commercial business. He does woodworking. So quite a bit of his woodworking tools are set up uh, to run at these kinds of voltages. And he doesn't have any three-phase available. So he's stuck with the, the single-phase motors. And he's able to... Uh, run most of them at, at 240 volts or 230 volts uh, to help kind of cut down on some of the current that they may draw. So here's the table right from the, the code book. I just kind of cropped it down to size so it's a little bit easier. It's like any standard table we're going to use. We're going to go down the horsepower reading, the horsepower column right here until we find our correct horsepower and then once we find our correct horsepower we just simply go across until we find the right voltage column that we want to use and when we meet at that point we have our information that we need and so for uh, this example of let's say just a one HP or one horsepower motor at oh let's say 208 volts we're gonna go across to 208 at the one horsepower row and it looks like we're going to find a current value of 8.8 .8 amps for that particular motor. So table 43250 is going to have quite a bit more information on it. It's got a lot more selection, a lot more motors that we can choose from obviously with the popularity of three-phase power and the popularity of manufacturing things and having processes here in the United States we need to have quite a few options to choose from so we have options all the way from a half a horse all the way to a 500 horse uh, in these um, voltages of 115 all the way up to 2300 volts and the table 43250 it covers motors that would commonly find powering all sorts of industrial equipment and Mr. V's been showing you those videos the the sawmills the gravel pits um, we saw those Trantec automation uh, robots moving things around they use some three-phase motors in those as well um, wastewater treatment plants air handling equipment we've talked about the Great Wolf Lodge and all the air that they move throughout and we have elevators and also escalators that would be uh, utilizing three-phase motors as well. So many, many choices, many, many uses for a three-phase motor. Table 43250 is going to tell us the current values that each are going to uh, use. So here's our table. We're dealing with horsepower here on the left-hand side. We've got several different columns that we can select from and choose from. We're a lot of times in this column right here, I kind of relabeled it 480 because a lot of times the voltage we have is 480, but the code uses 460 as the nominal voltage for that column. And then we're also going to look at quite a few applications of 208 three phase as well because that's a pretty popular uh, voltage system coming on the. Uh, the Y system. So again this slide is is just review of our basic table usage. Okay, Locate the correct column uh, by determining the source voltage. Follow that column down until you intersect the horsepower rating of the motor and where this intersection occurs is the current value of the motor. 
With this current value, you can now begin the process of finding overcurrent devices, overloads, and what size starter will be needed for this motor. And so we're going to look at, say, fuses. And so a lot of times we're going to take the that current value. So we'll use the letter. Actually, we should probably use the letter I, right? That stands for current. And then we're going to multiply that by some percentage. So for either a fuse or a circuit breaker, we're going to multiply that by a percentage. And that should equal the size fuse we're going to use. If we're looking for overloads, a lot of times we're going to use the manufacturer's guide. So we've looked already at that uh, we've looked at that slide rule. So I'll draw a little picture here, that rectangular slide rule we've used from square D. And uh, you just move that back and forth until you find your correct horsepower rating and then you will be able to look at that uh, opening and you'll be able to determine the size starter and also the size overloads that you need for that particular motor.